Hey, Trail Kreitzer over at Go Hunt. Uh, today, I'm gonna do a little post-season gear repair video for you. Uh, one of the most commonly asked questions we get is how to maintain and care for your down sleeping bags, your down jackets, your down pants. Uh, they can get holes and tears um, and you can damage those things. So I'm gonna do a little video on how to repair those. Also, just touch briefly on how to maintain those. Uh, season's pretty well wrapped up. You've got now till you know May, June, July when those results start to come out. It's a great time to maintain and take care of your gear so that next season, uh, everything that you need is ready to go, it's repaired and, and uh, you're off to the races. All right, so just to jump in, just a few brief tips about down, whether you're talking about a down sleeping bag or a down jacket, uh, you never want to compress and store your down. Uh, doing so long-term will actually damage those little fill clusters and they'll compress and they won't rebound. So when you have your sleeping bag and it's not in use in the off season, you want to make sure that you store this loosely. So hang it over a hanger, you know, hang it in a cool, dry spot. You know, if you've got a gear room or a closet, do that. Uh, often most of these sleeping bags will come with a loose storage bag. So it's a large sack. It's not a stuff sack. You just simply put that in that sack and you store it so that that down is not compressed. One of the first things that I like to do after my season is kind of wrapped up and over with for the year and I'm starting to put my applications in is to wash my sleeping bag. As you use that bag all fall, you get a lot of nights in it. Um, you know, obviously you're hiking a lot. You got a lot of oils in your body. You got a lot of sweat. A lot of that grime can build up on your sleeping bag. And those body oils can actually work down into the down and it can actually compromise the loft of your down. So you want to wash your sleeping bag. Um, I'll typically wash my bag a couple times a year. I might wash it mid-season if it's getting really grimy, but I definitely like to wash it after each post-season. So December, January is a perfect time frame to make sure that you get your bag nice and clean and dried out so that you can use it again in the fall. Uh, we have some products in the Go Hunt gear shop that are specifically designed and built to wash your down sleeping bag or your down clothing. You do not want to use regular detergent. So don't use that, it will actually damage the down clusters. Um, they make specific down wash. We sell that in the Go Hunt gear shop. If you click the link right here in the top left above my head, uh, you'll actually get live links to those products in the gear shop. I have a couple of them here and I'm gonna touch on those. Uh, the first one is this little Granger's down wash kit. Um, the great thing about this Granger's kit is it comes with uh, the wash and then it also comes with three of these rubber balls. You might be wondering what those little rubber balls are for. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash your sleeping bag with the down wash. All the instructions are on the package itself. Um, it doesn't take much. You wanna make sure that you wash it in a washing machine that's large enough uh, to accommodate your sleeping bag. Uh, if you go to a laundromat, they typically have those large industrial size washing machines. Those are great for washing down sleeping bags. You wanna wash it by itself on a low cycle. Um, you don't need to really scrub and get that thing, you know, super agitated in a washing machine. Like I said, use this down wash. It's specifically built for down. So the great thing about this Granger's kit is it actually comes with these three little rubber balls. Uh, what those are used for is to help you break up those down clusters during the drying process. So after you've washed your sleeping bag, you wanna put that in a large dryer by itself once again. Uh, throw in these three rubber balls and what that does is it bounce around it bounces around in the dryer It breaks up those down clusters over the cycle so that those clusters aren't stuck together with that moisture um, You want to dry that on a low heat setting. You don't need to you know nuke the sleeping bag It may take you three or four, you know full cycles in a dryer to get this thing completely dry uh, Moisture will compromise again the loft of the down. You don't want to store your bag, you know moist or wet you want to make sure that that thing's gone through several cycles and it's completely, you know, dried out. Um, we do have another wash. This is the Nikwax Down Wash Direct. This is another wash that you can use. It's the wash that I use to wash my down sleeping bags. If you don't, you know, have the rubber balls that come with the Granger kit, you can also use a set of tennis balls, which is what I use in a dryer to completely, you know, dry out my sleeping bag. Um, we have a more detailed video of how to wash your sleeping bag with a complete how-to. Uh, we will put a link in above again, and you can click on that and actually see the full process of how to wash and dry your sleeping bag. Another topic of repairing sleeping bags or down jackets is what happens if you get a small hole. Uh, it can happen relatively easy. Uh, these zippers in a sleeping bag, they can get stuck and as you pull those, um, they can snag and can actually pull a hole. Um, the material that they use in these sleeping bags is super lightweight. Obviously to keep the weight down, uh, it can tear very easily. 
Uh, as you're cleaning your zippers, I would advise that as well, just simply take a small brush, kind of clean out your zippers. Um, if you do get a snag when you're pulling that zipper, you know, don't jerk and pull on it. Uh, it'll pull a hole or put a hole in your sleeping bag like I've got in this uh, Stone Glacier Chill Coot right here in front of me. Um, just very simply, you know, pull that out, tease it out perpendicular to the zipper if you do get a snag. Uh, but if you do get a hole, uh, this bag here is Chris Neville's bag. He got a couple of giant holes on an elk hunt in Montana. Um, I'm going to walk you through how to actually repair those. I've got some products here that are going to help me do that. Uh, the first thing I need is a little bottle of uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, you use that to actually just clean the area around the hole so that you make sure that you get a nice seal with the patch. Uh, the patch I'm going to be using are these little tenacious tape patches. So I've got a couple of those. I have a roll of tenacious tape, which is the repair tape, comes in a roll. You can use that, works way better than duct tape. Uh, I've got these little mini patches, which are small patches. You can use those for small holes, comes in a kit. It's got the nice rounded edges, comes in a little packet, which is nice. You can throw that in your repair kit or in your kill kit, in your backpack, so you can take those with you. Those are great to have with you. That's a, a hot tip. Those are great for repairing sleeping bags or sleeping pad or, or anything that you might need to in a pinch. So the last piece I've got here is the seam grip, which is just a silicone sealant. Uh, what I'm gonna use that for is once I put the patch on, I'm just gonna take that and kind of spread that around the edges to make sure that I get a full seal uh, around the edge of that patch. So I'm just gonna pop these packages open. I'm gonna find the two holes and uh, I'm just gonna walk you through how to actually put the patch on use the seam grip to seal off the edges. Uh, and I'm just gonna repair these holes in Neville's sleeping bag so that he can use it next year. So the next step is just to find the holes. Uh, I believe I've got one right up here, which is a relatively small hole. It's kind of an L shape looks like. Uh, it looks like he's probably had some duct tape on there at one point. Uh, the other hole I've got is down here. That one's quite a bit bigger, looks like. Maybe a couple inches at least. Uh, for that one, I'm definitely going to need to use the tape because I need more coverage uh, for that bigger hole. Uh, so like I said, the first step you want to do is you want to make sure that you clean the area really good all the way around it. Um, if there's any down that's leaking out, obviously you want to stuff that back in. You don't want to lose any down clusters. Um, you know, down's going to keep you warm, so you want to keep as many of those as you can inside. Uh, next step, I've got a little cotton swab here. You can buy those at your local Walmart. So I just got a little rubbing alcohol on that patch and I'm just going to kind of smooth it out. I'm just going to clean all around the area and make sure that I've got it nice and clean. One thing about it is when you put the patch on, you want to make sure that you got good coverage. Uh, they recommend about a half inch, maybe an inch uh, on around, around all edges so that you get uh, total coverage and a good seal outside of that. Uh, this rubbing alcohol, it'll dry pretty quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that real good and let it dry for a while while I clean the other one. So this first hole I'm gonna repair with one of these little gear aid patches, which is a, a little pre-kit that comes with a few patches. You can see that the corners are rounded on those. Uh, that's one thing if you decide to use the tenacious tape, you wanna round those corners with some scissors. Uh, if you do just hard corners, uh, it can peel uh, over time. So you do wanna round the corners on those, which you can see these little patches already come pre-rounded. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is just kind of lay that out flat on a hard surface. As you've got that laid out flat, like I said, you want to stuff as much down as you can back in that hole. And then you're going to uh, just remove the patch. So you can remove these two patches here from the outside. And then as you apply this patch, you want to push it down in the center and kind of tease it out to the outside so that you push any air bubbles or any kind of gaps uh, to the outside. So very carefully just kind of place that. Like I said, you want to smooth it out as much as you can. Try to keep the material for bunching. Um, it's not perfect. <laughs> it can be kind of tough to do. If you got somebody to help you out, that can help as well. But like I said, I'm just going to get that as flat as I can. I'm going to lay the patch in it and just kind of press it in on the center and then try to tease out uh, any gaps or holes to the outside of that patch as I go. So you can see I've kind of teased that out and it actually worked pretty good. You can manipulate the fabric as you push that out. You can kind of pull it to get a good seal, kind of get a bunch of those wrinkles out as you push that down. 
And then, like I said, you just want to smooth that completely out to the edge. Make sure that you get a good seal and a good stick all the way out to the edge. That was a pretty good sized hole. All right, so for this next hole, uh, it's quite a bit bigger. It's at least a couple, you know, inch and a half um, tear down here on the bottom. It's also got kind of an L shape to it. It's a much bigger hole. Uh, it's definitely gushing a lot more down out of it than the, the other one was. Uh, for that, I'm going to use this Tenacious Tape, which comes in a roll. You can get it different colors. Uh, this one's black, obviously. Uh, but what I want to do, like I said, is I want to make sure I've got about a half inch uh, on either edge of that. Um, you know, for the sake of this one, I'll probably just cut it the width here and just kind of round the corners. So I'm just going to cut me a piece here with some scissors. So like I said, I'm just going to take this tenacious tape. I'm going to round the corners because again, any sharp edges can, can uh, start to pull up. So you just want to make sure that the corners are rounded. It's got the patch, got the hole. Just going to lay that on there as close to center as I can. Try not to touch the surface too much if you can help it. Like I said, I'm just going to kind of lay that in on that seam. And then I'm just going to kind of work it on to the uh, hole. Just make sure that I get a good seal on as many edges as I can. Again, it's not a, a perfect science because these bags are, you know, made of fabric and it moves with you. But you can see I got a pretty good seal right there across that patch. So just lay it on and work it all the way out to the edges, work out any air bubbles, work the edges, make sure that you get a good seal between the uh, patch and the material of the sleeping bag. The last step to repairing your down sleeping bag or your jacket, if you got a hole in it uh, after you've patched it with a, uh, a patch. Personally, I like to use this seam grip, which is a little silicone sealant, uh, an adhesive. It's a waterproofer uh, as well as an adhesive. Essentially what I'll use it for is to put around the edges of the patch. Um, it kind of keeps that patch down and in place. Um, I've used this seam grip to repair sleeping pads. Uh, I had a little hole in a sleeping pad. I used some of the seam grip. Um, that same patch that I did with this has lasted you know, five or six years at this point. So this stuff is great stuff. It'll keep the patches uh, in place. You can wash this in the future without uh, any issues uh, of these patches coming off. So like I said, the last step I'm gonna use is the seam grip, which is a seam sealant. Uh, and I'm just gonna coat the outside edges of these patches. There's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can take some of this and squeeze it out onto you know, a surface. Um, I've got a little, the back side of the, one of the patches that I used. You can apply it with the brush that comes with this kit. The other thing you can do is take this and directly apply it to the edge of the patch and then just use your fingers to coat it or the edge of the brush. Um, you know, personally, I'm just going to squeeze a little out onto this. I'm going to use the brush to just simply apply it on the edge of this patch. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out on this. This stuff is extremely sticky, so you want to be careful of that. So once I've got it kind of spread out, like I said, a, a hard, flat surface will help you out. But I'm just going to coat the edge of this patch as I go. And just want to work around the edges of the patch and just get a nice seal between the patch and the sleeping bag material. While I'm painting this on, uh, another hot tip for some of you out there that are active sleepers at night and you toss and turn. Um, I've had guys call in and say that they, they fall off their sleeping pad at night. Um, a little bit of the seam grip applied onto a sleeping pad, you know, five or six beads at different uh, areas of that sleeping pad can keep you and your sleeping bag and your pad uh, together at night. So that's a little, another little pro tip and another little good use of this silicone uh, seam grip. So I finished up the patch job and then the uh, seam grip to kind of do the edges. Uh, the next step is just to let that fully dry. That seam grip is extremely sticky stuff. You want to try to not get that on any other parts of your sleeping bag. So if you can prop that open, just make sure that it doesn't get on any other parts of uh, the sleeping bag, you'll be happy that you did so. So in conclusion, uh, this is how you maintain and take care of a hole in a sleeping bag or a down jacket or a pair of pants. It's a pretty simple process. You can do it at home. Uh, it's very easy. Just make sure that you, you do it right now and you get it taken care of. You don't want to get into the field next fall uh, and find out that you failed to repair a giant hole in your down sleeping bag. You know, after you've done this, you let it dry. You can completely, you know, wash it and use it as normal and it will last, you know, a long time. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, once again, this is how you maintain, take care of your sleeping bag in the off season. <laughs>